Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video. ATP Philosopher, check that, what a beautiful t-shirt. Um, <laughs> welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with, with myself, Jonathan, the MS Pierce. This is a frontline update for the 19th of December 2023. If you don't know what the lines on my map mean, please pause the video and check out the legend. Yep, that is me on the video now. Okay, we'll go to the northeast sector first, as you can see, and probably expect there mo that most of the pins on the map are going to be of a reddish hue, meaning that the Russians are making most of the gains. They are pretty much on the offensive. The Ukrainians are struggling uh, across the front lines due to a lack of... I, I think ammunition and resources as they have been uh, claiming over the last few days. We we'll go to look at the Institute for the Study of War. There is not too much to say about the first couple of areas. So this is the uh, the northeastern sector here. There, all the usual places are mentioned. There is activity, which is not too much that I think changes anything. Same same with Bakhmut. But as we can see here from the mapping that JR has done, thanks JR, total legend. Uh, the Russians have made some more gains towards Sinkivka. This is a small area of woods to the north of the town, as according to Andrew Perpetua, some gains in that uh, that neck of the woods, quite quite literally. Uh, thank you. Here all day. And this is the mapping, as according to no reports. Uh, in the Kupiansk-Sinkivka area during the last couple of days the Russians have somewhat advanced north of Sinkivka getting closer to the northern outskirts these are minor non-strategical gains given the amount of vehicle losses Russia is taking in the area I mean while that's true they are taking some heavy losses in here in this area uh, are the gains I don't know is that dismissing uh, minor I mean they are relatively minor actually to be honest non-strategic uh, yeah, I mean, if they take Sinkivka, that is going to be a, a bit of an issue for the Ukrainians. But uh, I think that might be fairly hard for the Russians to do. And they are, as mentioned, taking some fairly substantial losses in that area. Uh, we'll see how that develops over the days. Uh, nothing too much to report along the whole of the rest of the northeastern axis. Uh, going down past Fatova to Kremina, there's activity in Serebiansky Forest still. Activity around Tierney. Uh, area so yeah still still lots of activity no changes to the mapping here we're going to come down to Bakhmut where there is a lot of change to the mapping particularly uh, in the Kromova area to the north again going towards um, Bodanivka according to Syriac maps the Russians advancing further along the 0506 highway that comes into the north of Bakhmut and Andrew Perpetua uh, making some changes to his mapping the Russians pushing pretty much directly westwards of Bakhmut um, you know just north of where the old MiG statue was uh, in this area of open ground so actually that is slightly worrying moving towards Ivaniska uh, and you know, obviously along the T0504 highway as that comes out of the um, of the city to the west. So that's pretty challenging stuff. Let's go and look at some of the sources around Bakhmut. So at maps here says of the northern area, the Russian army continues advancing along the railway and the road towards Chazyar. 95% of the territorial losses at the end of May and June were reversed. In other words, you know, in fairly quick order i guess compared to uh, the difficulty ukrainians had in taking or well they didn't have too much difficulty but it has they have been unable to hold on to it for as long as as i i guess would be ideal uh the ukrainians have have ceded 95 percent of what they took since may um and as we can see down to the south of bakhmut as well the ukrainians finding it difficult to see, difficult in the kind of Dacha area to the south of that MiG statue. And indeed, the Russians have moved through there, as according to both Andrew Perpetua and Syriac maps. Uh, and so Ivaniska is being challenged from the north and from the south. And in the area where the, the trench network is, according to Andrew Perpetua, the Russians have pushed right up uh, well, really, along the middle, into the middle of that trench area. And that's the trench area, as we can see it from possibly older pictures here 
although newer than the 2018 ones, you can see it's far more extensive. I don't know when this area of imagery was taken, but the Russians, apparently, according to him and Deep State Map, and the Russians are in the middle of that trench network. And according to Surat Maps, they control all of that trench network. Uh, this is pretty worrying for the Ukrainians uh, as... Uh, yeah, I don't, don't know why there's... you. I think that might be the wrong colour there. That should be the lighter colour if it is Ukrainian gains. Possibly Andrew Perpetua showing a few gains pushing back uh, just there. Uh, but Russian gains coming further down here. So I'm not, not quite sure of that one because that's sitting inside the Surat Maps line. So nonetheless, some, some changes around here. The Russians making uh, some gains along the railway line as it skirts to the northeast of Klitschivka. This is all fairly worrying. I think Klitschivka is looking more and more vulnerable. I mean, really, it's about this area, and it looks like the Russians are putting concerted effort into taking that. Surat Maps says of the area, actually here, but also further to the north, the Russian army has advanced beyond the maximum limit in May, taking control over new parts of the Dacha west of the city. In addition, troops began re-entering into the town of Klitschivka. So that is the claim that now they are in Klitschivka, as you can see up here. Uh, yeah, so if if the Russians take control of the trench network here, then Klitschivka is pointless for the Ukrainians to try and defend it from here because, as I'm sure you know by now, but I'll show you anyway, the topography here is that this trench network sits on the hills above uh, above the Klitschivka itself. And so if these trenches are taken, they can just hammer this from above, hammer Klitschivka from above. So there really isn't much point in sticking around in what is now just rubble all along there when the Russians have the, the advantage of the high ground and the trenches. Uh, and that's why I think, you know, the, the Ukrainians... Uh, you know, presence in Klitschivka is numbered in in just days, I would have thought. And then Cody and Mivka, Andrew Perpetua has some gains for the Russians there as well. That's in line with what Surat Maps said yesterday. Uh, so just slightly more refined, a little bit more conservative for Andrew Perpetua. But generally speaking, the Russians appear to be pushing out of Klitschivka and along the uh, along the canal. Uh, there's still all this area here in the south that the, the Ukrainians took during the counter-offensive period. Uh, so that 95% was, was talking about this area to the north. Uh, but there's, there's a large amount of area that Ukrainians took back here since May. As you can see by the white line that we have here, that indicates where the Russians were on May the 30th, I think. So still a lot of work for the Russians to do here, but it's not looking good for the Ukrainians. They are under mounting pressure all around Bakhmut. Right, we'll now come on to Donetsk area, so to Avdivka, where uh, we'll go to the ISW, see what they have to say. Russian uh, mill bloggers claim that Russian forces advance up to 800 metres in, de uh, in depth north and northwest of Opitny and 4 to 500 metres in depth west of Vodyanye. So Opitny and Vodyanye is all around here. West of Vodyanye would be towards Pervomysky, but it could also be up here. So we have seen over the last three or four days, Russian advances essentially all along this entire sector. Um, but uh, yeah, again, challenging for the Ukrainians there. ISW confirming some of those claims that we've seen over the last few days. A Russian mill blogger noted, or at least confirming that Russians are making those claims. A Russian mill blogger noted that poor weather conditions, including thick fog and ice, continue to impede Russian and Ukrainian ground force activity in and around Avdivka. So it is worrying for the Ukrainians here. They are under lots of pressure, but no changes to my mapping sources today, which is good for the Ukrainians. A bit of stability there, maybe stabilizing that area. Now, it's it's worth popping into some of these different uh, sources for Avdivka. There's a, a bit to say. Quote, the Russian Federation will not be able to seize Avdivka even before the presidential elections of the Russian Federation, which is scheduled for March next year. So this is Vitaly Barabash, ahead of the Avdivka City Military Administration, saying that basically they're not going to take Avdivka before March 17th. That's a pretty bold claim. Uh, they have incurred huge costs, the Russians. Uh, they are more likely to have success, it seems, around Bakhmut than around Avdivka, where they are they're incrementally moving, but 
it is going to be very tough once they get into the buildings of Abdivka. It depends actually what happens around the neck of the cauldron because that will define whether the Ukrainians will continue to operate in Abdivka to defend each of the streets there. They won't bother doing that if the neck is closed. So if the Ukrainians can keep the Russians to where they are around the neck here, then they might have a chance of, of holding on till uh, till March the 17th. But that, that is a pretty bold claim, I guess, from Barabash. Um, uh, here we have Surat Maps talking about some gains in the Novelsky area. The, the Russians were pushed back a little bit there. The Ukrainians made some small advances in this area. We talked about this yesterday um, with regard to, I think it was Deeps, was it Deep State Maps? Uh, having a, a movement here, but um, or it was certainly Global War Monitor was saying it. And now Surat Maps is, is agreeing that the Russians have been pushed back a little bit there. That is great news, really. Uh, any gain is great for the Ukrainians if they can get it. Um, and then some gains south of Abdivka now. So we're going to go down, uh, so relatively quiet, really, for, for Abdivka news. We're going to come down to Nova Mikhailivka and, well, Marienka, still like tough activity around there and Pobjeda. We're going to come to Nova Mikhailivka where Surat Maps has the Russians right up to the edge of Nova Mikhailivka. And in fact, Andrew Perpetua does as well. I had some big changes there yesterday for him. Uh, so they're broadly in agreement with each other there. Uh, the, the Surat Maps says... Uh, the Russian army is increasing control over the farms adjacent to the cemetery. Uh, combat continues south. Combat continues south of Nova Mikhailivka. And um, here we have no reports being slightly more favourable to the Ukrainians, but still a large amount of land taken by the Russians. But I think they're a bit behind the curve here. I think generally uh, the Russians are at at the edge of Nova Mikhailivka. There's some geolocated footage to suggest that in a second. He says geolocated footage shows that Russian forces have tried to enter the southern outskirts of Nova Mikhailivka, confirming further advances near the T0531 road from Solodka. A fairly big mechanised attack south of Nova Mikhailivka was repelled. Although he says, you know, have tried to enter the southern outskirts, he only has control further to the south. And it might just be this geolocated bit, bit of evidence here suggesting that the Russians are there or have attacked there. It doesn't mean that they actually control it. They've attacked there and might be repelled. Anyway, the enemy attempted to storm our positions in the village of Nova Mikhailivka. He managed to reach industrial buildings on the outskirts of the village, but the paratroopers managed to repel them. Uh, what what that means about where the Russians are now in terms of uh, solid control, I don't know. But they have certainly been present in attacking this position on the southern outskirts, the industrial outskirts of Nova Mikhailivka. So that is a worry for the Ukrainians. I, As I said over the last few days, this is important for stopping the fight happening at Kostantinivka, which is of a greater intrinsic value than Nova Mikhailivka. Uh, the value of Nova Mikhailivka is that it, these places aren't being attacked. It has extrinsic value. Uh, anyway, we can come further round the corner and actually no reports in the ISW about this area at all from either side, which is uh, interesting. Uh, we come to Robotina where there are some gains for the Russians as according to Syriac maps in the very south of the Robota, Robotina sector. Uh, indeed, I was, uh, sorry, not ISW, Syriac map says Russian army advanced 700 meters between Robotina and Verbove, surpassing the main line of defense again. So they've got over those Russian Surovikan defense lines there and have a bit of breathing space in the south as according to them. Um, the ISW says of this area geolocated footage oh no that was uh nova Mikhailivka and marinka having uh tough activity advances further west of marinka towards kurokovo so sorry that i did miss that out i meant to say that marinka up here advances west of M marinka towards kurokovo is slightly worrying you know the further they get there to the west uh anyway i was meant to be talking about Robotina. Uh, sorry to flick around all over the shop. Uh, Ukrainian military observer Mashevets claimed that the Russian units of the VDV, the paratroopers, advanced 800 meters northwest of Robotina, uh, and that other VDV elements advanced 400 meters to the northwest of Vobove. Um, 
so uh, exactly where that means I, i'm not sure that's more like here and here that would, might be referring to the changes we saw yesterday uh, and these syriac maps changes might might appear tomorrow in the isw we'll have to wait and see um so yeah the isw says they've not observed visual evidence of those mashevets claims however uh, and then really become on to the crinky area so moving out of there out of Robotina to Krinky, and there are some more gains to be had here for the Russians. Uh, slightly worrying if this is true, although I said to Andrew Perpetua uh, yesterday privately, I was like, oh, Suret Maps has got some big gains for the Russians in the Krinky area. Uh, you know, what do you think about that? And he says, not seen a proof, just Russians claiming victories. They have to claim victory. So uh, take it with a pinch of salt. It may have happened. But it may not have happened. At least Andrew Perpetua says as a mapper, he's not seen any evidence for this closing of the bridgehead at Krinky. Uh, let's see what Surat maps say. Well, the Russian army has recaptured new positions south and east of Krinky. So fairly considerable gains for the Russians as according to Surat maps. Uh, we have some geolocated evidence from the ISW. Uh, concerning this area, the ISW says geolocated footage published on the 18th indicates that Russian forces marginally advance in Krinky. Um, let's go and see what this marginal advance is. So the Marines of the 35th Marine Brigade inflict damage on the occupier's personnel. So these are Russians being hit at this geolocated position. And um, we'll see where that is on our map. And actually, that is interesting. So that would support what uh Surat maps says as that pro-russian map and actually Surat maps have been broadly correct calling victories early but actually the other mappers do end up agreeing with them as of the last week and i've said this previously that when the russians do really well Surat maps is fairly accurate um although it m might be slightly uh too positive on occasion but during the main offensives you know like we saw i don't even remember but we saw during the ukrainian counteroffensive that they were making claims about russians taking all sorts of land around here and taking sinkivka and st stuff like that that ended up not being correct but when the russians are actually on their main counter offense or their main offensive uh, Surat maps is generally more correct, and when when the Ukrainians make gains, they don't like to talk about that. So they're they're much more conservative with Ukrainian claims than they are with Russian claims. But I think at the moment they're broadly being uh, accurate. The Russians are pushing pretty much everywhere, and I think it is difficult for the Ukrainians in in the Krinky area to expand their bridgehead. And I think that is a worry, and this is perhaps a materialization of my worries that I've been uh, communicating to you over the last really sort of month as the, the ukrainians have failed to expand this bridgehead uh, meaningfully and it, over the last month or two it means that they become more and more vulnerable to the to the russians piling in reserves into the area and and trying to push the ukrainians back and that geolocation could indicate that surat maps is onto something there with with showing that the russians are under a lot uh, sorry the ukrainians are under a lot of pressure there um anyway that is the the frontline update for you is not looking good for the Ukrainians, but we're kind of expecting that. I would be the, the major worry is Nova Mikhailivka for me and Krinky actually. I, I, you know, that was the one area where the Ukrainians are have been attacking and continued to, to attack, and it seems like they could be under some pressure there. Um, we'll have to see how that turns out. Anyway, uh, at the same time, remember there are successes for the Ukrainians in terms of hitting. The Russians behind the lines, and really that's what I'm hoping for for this winter period, is that the Ukrainians have enough uh, munitions, they have enough capability to strike the Russians routinely uh, where it really hurts them. Uh, so that the, while the, the activity, I was almost going to draw on my map today to show this, but drones are so prevalent uh, on the front lines that, that it's so difficult to really move in huge uh movements that that essentially you know y you've got drones oops that doesn't really help uh when it does that you've got drones basically active and all of this area along the front line that that you know there's going to be there's, there's going to be no movement for the ukrainians there uh because the russians are going to hit 
the the Ukrainians with their drones and then the Ukrainians are going to hit the Russians with their drones. So we've got, you know, all, all of it. And this is the same right across the front line. Drones see everything. People can't move. There's no surprise attacks everywhere. Uh, there's no surprise attacks anywhere, sorry. So that means that, that you're going to have this stalemate with grinding f moves forward that come at huge costs. So the Russians are making advances in a number of places on the front line, but they are doing so at, at vast costs to themselves, I would wager. And so what, as I keep saying, what the Ukrainians have to do for the next six months is absolutely hammer the Russians in areas behind the front behind the front lines they need to completely you know m muller as i would say logistics and targets all the way back here at six months of doing that you know you, they need to be hitting everything and then back into russia as well we've seen hits on the uh, morozovsk air base over the last couple of days in rostov we need more of that the Ukrainians need to just be absolutely hammering the Russians, uh, knowing that they can't be too effective around the front line, around the contact line, um, certainly for until they are completely reconstituted uh, in terms of troops and uh, ammunition and resources and whatnot. So that's what I see happening over the winter period. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, like subscribe and share. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.